I'm going to show you how to go from capturing portraits like this to this. And just to further prove that my advice works, I'm going to be shooting with nothing more than this. A 20-year-old Canon Rebel DSLR and the kit lens that barely works. So honestly, if I can get a decent shot with this, you can almost certainly get a better one with your modern day camera. Also, make sure you stick around right until the very end because I'm going to be sharing a bonus trick to make sure that your photos get that extra bit of flair. So you won't want to miss out on that. All right, then keep your secrets. Anyway, let's start by highlighting the issues with our start image. Now this shot has a whole bunch of problems. Firstly, the lighting is just god awful. It was shot on a super bright sunny day, so this has cast unflattering shadows across her face. The composition could also be better. Currently she is just floating randomly in the middle of the frame, and we've also got a tree sticking out of her head. Now the settings dialed in by the camera automatically set the aperture to around f8 for me, which means that just about everything in this photo is pin sharp and in focus. So that means there's no separation between the model and the rest of the scene. Speaking of which, the current location is a little bit dull too. So let's start by fixing that. Luckily, I didn't really need to go too far as I spotted a patch of wildflowers nearby that I thought would be a much nicer spot. And already we're off to a good start. Now let's fix the lighting situation. Because it's a bright sunny day and unfortunately our new location puts us right in the path of that direct sunlight, we want to fix this by rotating the model so that the light is behind her and we are shooting into the sun. And this will instantly remove those harsh shadows from across her face. As you can see, this is definitely an improvement, but we can certainly do better. Let's Let's work on improving the subject separation by zooming out to the longest end of the zoom, which in my case is 55 millimeters. Let's also open up the aperture to the widest possible setting or smallest F number to create the shallowest depth of field possible. Obviously in this scenario, I've limited myself to just using a kit lens. And in the real world, I would probably instead opt for a prime lens with a much wider maximum aperture of something like F 1.8, as that enables me to achieve a much thicker blur than I can currently create. But regardless, even with this kit lens, it's still a subtle but worthwhile improvement. We can still improve it further by getting closer to the model and also by kneeling down to shoot at a lower, more flattering angle. This also means we can frame the shot nicely so that we have the wildflowers defocused at the bottom of the image to help add some depth. Then it's just a case of experimenting with poses to make the shot look far more interesting. Currently, the crossed arms make Georgia look a little bit rigid, so I just asked her to be big with her arm movements and to also close her eyes to make the whole thing feel a bit more dreamlike. I also picked some of the wildflowers nearby and asked her to hold them in her hand, which I thought would just help to tie everything together. And as you can see, this new pose has taken this image up to a whole new level. And when we go back and compare our current photo with the one we first started with, you can obviously see there's a dramatic difference in quality. And as you You've seen, I've really not done anything overly complicated here. All I've done is made a series of super simple changes which collectively have resulted in a much more professional image. But we're not quite finished here because as I promised at the start of the video, I'm going to show you my bonus trick wow. to gain dreamy and cinematic looking images without the need for editing. And I did that by using one of these, a black mist filter from Nissi, who are also the sponsors of this video. Now attaching one of these to the front of your lens will reduce the contrast and diffuse the highlights, creating this amazing hazy look which works particularly well when shooting into direct sunlight like I am doing now. And as you can see, the difference between the shots taken with and without the filter is pretty striking. The shot with the filter just looks way more cinematic and I really love how it's eased off some of the contrast for a much more flattering result. Another benefit which I wasn't quite expecting was that by using this filter, it naturally smooths out the wrinkles and blemishes on your portraits, which means there's less work for you to do in post-production. The Black Mist filter from Nissi is available in a whole range of different filter threads and also comes available in different strengths. I'm currently shooting with a half stop filter which is the strongest one currently available but there are also a 1 4 stop and a 1 8 stop option and the intensity of the effect is approximately twice as strong with each increase in degree. If you want to pick up a filter for yourself then be sure to check out Nissi's website using the links in the description below and thanks once again to Nissi for sponsoring this video.